Hi, welcome uh, to today to Five Ways to Build Lightning Fast Components. Um, thank you for coming because I know this is the last day and it's the morning and um, everybody's tired. I am, uh, special reasons. But um, anyway, my name is Sarah Morgan Nettles and uh, just have to do the safe harbor statement and tell you that if I say anything with any forward working statements that you will. Um, not make any purchase decision based on those, but I have to tell you, I'm not going to do that. I'm not, not everything I'm going to show you today is stuff that's currently available in the platform, so it shouldn't be a problem for you. Um, again, my name is Sarah Morgan Nettles, and um, on the first slide it said that I was a senior developer for Synaptic AP, which is actually the same company that that guy who was up here before Drew was <laughs> works for, but um, as of this week, I have joined the Salesforce Ohana, and that's why I have my little Ohana thing, um, because I'm now going to be on the Trailhead team uh, working as a technical curriculum engineer, and so I'm very, very excited about that. Thank you. I feel the same way. It's awesome. So thank you very much. Um, I also am a blogger, and that's my blog um, and my Twitter handle. Um, and I'm also a certified platform developer. Um, I'm also a Pluralsight author, and I've done a bunch of courses on Lightning specifically, and that was actually part of the inspiration for this talk because that's my uh, latest course that's available, but I just wrapped up development of another one that's about Lightning best practices. And in doing that course, I discovered a lot of really interesting things about how to make your components run faster. And so the tips that I'm going to have for you today are kind of the top five, the juiciest ones, the ones that I thought were the simplest to implement, um, but got you kind of the biggest bang for the buck. So even if you don't know a lot about Lightning Components, I think you can still find something valuable in this today because they're very simple things to implement. Um, so why should you even care about performance for your Lightning Components, you might be asking? Um, well, this you don't know when you build an app. I mean, we are in a mobile world, and what is happening is you don't know where that, what device is going to be accessing those apps built with those components and what kind of connection those people are going to have. So you have to assume that basically every millisecond counts. So if you can shave off even 100 milliseconds, you're doing a good job. And you should do that with all of your components. So today, the, uh, the top five tips, just to run over them real quickly, are going to be uh, number five, we're going to go backwards, kind of David Letterman style, and go from number five, which is to check your settings, because there's a bunch that you need, or a couple that you need to check. Uh, number four is going to be using a or if tag for conditional rendering. Number three will be to check the console log, your browser console log. Uh, number two is going to be used to use the Lightning data service whenever possible. And number one is going to be to use storable actions when possible. And we're going to go through each of these, so don't worry. All right, so number five, to check your settings. The settings that I'm talking about are debug mode and component caching. And debug mode, what that is about is essentially um, if you, uh, when you render your components, um, if you have debug mode enabled, all of the JavaScript in CSS is not going to be minified. And so you're going to be able to see messages displayed to you in your console log. Well, if you have debug mode not enabled, then you're not going to see those. For component caching, um, this is by default turned on. And what this does is it enables your component, the definitions of them, to be cached, which allows them to be rendered the second time much faster. And that's a good thing. Well, in terms of what you want these settings set for, it differs depending on whether or not you're in development or production. And it's actually backwards depending on which setting you're doing. For debug mode, well, obviously, if you're in development, you want to see all those messages. So you want that enabled. But in production, you definitely want to make sure that is not enabled. Because what it's going to mean is that all your JavaScript and CSS is not going to be minified. And so it's going to take longer to download and longer to render. Um, for component caching, the opposite is true. You want to have that disabled for development because as you're making changes to your components in development and you go into the browser to test those, well, you just made a change. You go in, you're going to have to hit refresh about two or three times before you see those changes, and that's going to get annoying to you. So you're probably going to want to turn it off in your development, but you want to definitely make sure it's enabled in production because it makes a big impact on your performance. So 
In terms of how to access those settings, it's all just um, through setup. Uh, for the first one, debug mode, you just go to Lightning Components, and then you either toggle on or off that Enable Debug Mode, and then click Save. And remember, you want to enable that for development, but disable it for production. Uh, for component caching, it's a little different. Uh, still go to Setup, but there's a thing called Session Settings, and you kind of have to scroll down to see it. It's a little tricky on that page. Uh, but there you'll see a thing called Enable Secure and Persistent Browsing Caching to prove Proof performance, and by default, this is checked, but you want to make sure, like I said, that in development, you have it disabled, but you want to make sure it's enabled in production. Okay, for um, the fourth tip, that is has to do with conditional rendering. And just in case you're not sure what I mean by conditional rendering, um, here's an example where I have a component that's displaying some contact information. And let's say in this condition, I don't want the submit button for some reason to be available or rendered until the person has entered in all their contact information, like this. So they'll see it once they enter in their contact information, but not before then. Well, in the past, what was, when, especially when Lightning was first introduced, the recommendation for doing that kind of conditional rendering, even in the developer docs for a long time, was to use a method called CSS toggling, where you would basically just assign a, to the class um, a particular uh, class that would hide that, basically just make it not visible in your CSS. And then you would either, somewhere in the code, toggle that on or off using the toggle class. Well, that's fine, but what we've discovered is it's not actually a good way of doing it because that lightning bundle or whatever is inside of that um, conditional, conditionally rendered code is actually with CSS toggling still going to be rendered. It's just going to be hidden. So what's going to happen is that on click event with that new record is going to be activated and all the event handlers are going to be active and things are going to be looking at that and you didn't even actually want it rendered. So if you have a page or um, that's got a whole bunch of components that are being conditionally rendered, you could have a situation where you have a lot of activity going on with the events that's really not wanted at that time. So that could really impact your load times. The way to do it, in fact, is to use the Aura If tag. It's very simple to do. I mean, it's really not much different. You just use this Aura If, and then you have an attribute called is true, and you either toggle it on or off. When you do it this way, what's happening is it's not, that lighting button is not actually going to be rendered until that condition is true. So any event handlers associated with the content within that or if is not going to be active until the condition is true. So that's a much better way of doing it. Okay, number three is um, a thing to make sure you check your console log. Um, and the reason why, specifically, is not only is it a good idea because you're going to see probably a lot of messages there that you might be important to you to know about, but specifically the uh, component framework team back starting in winter 17 started pushing out to their uh, performance messages, which I kind of happened upon myself when I was doing this course, and I thought they were really interesting. And if you go, I actually had some components come up with these performance warnings that were functioning fine. They were okay, I didn't, they didn't have any errors. I didn't think there was any problems with them. And yet, I was getting performance warnings. And if you go to those more info, it'll tell you why you're getting those performance warnings and what you can do to resolve them. Um, and, but you won't know about them if you're not checking your console log. So um, it is something you can just access through your browser dev tools. Um, and I, have, I use Google Chrome. Uh, to do it that way, you can just right click inside the browser and select inspect. Um, but one thing to keep in mind on this is, you know how I was telling you earlier about settings? Well, debug mode, if you um, have that uh, or enabled, then all of your JavaScript is going to be minified, and you're not actually going to see those performance warnings. So this is something you would only want to do in development, not obviously in production, because you wouldn't want to have that enabled in production. OK, um, here's a quick question. How many of you have even heard of the Lightning Data Service? OK, that's good. Now, how many of you have used it? That's kind of what I thought. OK. <laughs> so all right. Well, for those of you that haven't even heard of it, um, it's, it's fairly new. But what it does is um, it is kind of like the standard controller for Lightning. And if you're a Visual Force developer, you know what I mean by the standard controller. 
Um, it has a lot of benefits, uh, one of them being that Apex and uh, SQL is not needed when you use it. Uh, that's huge. And one of the biggest reasons is because you don't have to do any FLS or field level security or CRUD, which is create, read, update, and delete uh, security. Because I have to tell you, if you're a Visual Force developer, you've been a bit spoiled. And that's because um, you didn't have to worry so much about that CRUD and FLS security. But Lightning is different. And in Lightning, you do. Otherwise, you could be potentially exposing data, sensitive data, that you're not intending to through your components if you're not specifically doing that checking within your controller code. But with the Lightning Data Service, you don't even have to worry about that. So that's what makes it so cool. Um, you also get auto notification on record changes and offline access on Salesforce One. But the biggest thing, the thing I think is the coolest thing, is that you get a single request and a cached response. And what I mean by that is, just to give you a scenario, okay, let's say you have two lighting components and they're both using that force record data tag, which is the lighting data service. Okay, if they wanna go ahead and send off a request for data, and what happens is it'll go to the lighting data service controller, and then it'll send off a request for that data to Salesforce. And then Salesforce will send back a single cached response to that shared data cache and then send it back to the component. But what's cool is you have potentially a third component come along, and it needs that same data. Well, at that point, because it's cached, that response, it doesn't have to go back to Salesforce at all. It's just going to get that data directly from that shared data cache, and it's going to render much quicker. So that's one of the biggest reasons I find to use that. And it's all built in, and it's very simple to implement. I mean, this is it, basically. This is the markup that's required um, to, to get what that is using right there, which is if you're using a single record and you're just doing um, creation and deletion of records on a single record, this is definitely the way to go. The code is so much simpler, so much easier, and so much more efficient. Um, okay, number one is to use storable actions. And this is something not a lot of people know about, but it's a very, very cool feature that provides a lot of benefits um, for very little effort, um, which is why I like it so much. Um, basically, this is not uh, involves like component caching that I was talking at, about at the beginning. This is the caching of the actual data. And this is useful in scenarios where you have like lists of data. Um, and especially it's uh, valuable when you have data that's not going to change, because obviously it's being cached. If it's being changed, this, this wouldn't work so well. But if you have data that's non-mutable or non-cached, or, or not changing, then, and you're displaying it like here, where you have a pagination feature, that where you're paging through all these files. You can see down here at the bottom, I have some uh, load times being displayed in the console log. And what it's showing to me is, as I'm using caching here, is that when I'm paging through, well, the first three pages are going to take, the first one takes 545 milliseconds, which is about a half a second. Not so bad. And then even less for page two or page three. But look what happens once it's been done, rendered the first time, and it's been cached. Then the next time they go back to the previous pages, as long as it hasn't expired, then those times drop to 0 0.60 and 0 0.46 milliseconds, which is like crazy fast. So that's how you get that performance. And to get that, all you have to do, like for instance, this is the code that was used to render that list back there. And you basically have an action that gets sent off um, through an asynchronous process, and then you have a call back to handle the response, and you enqueue that action. Well, to get that storable action, that's it. One line of code right there. That's all it took. And then I got all the benefits of all that page loading um, you know, built right in. So that's a great feature to know about and use if possible, if, if it warrants. All right, so just let to quickly review those tips. Um, number five was to check those settings uh, for both debug mode and component caching. Number four was when you're doing conditional rendering to use that or if statement versus the CSS toggling that you may have seen somewhere else. Um, check that console log for performance warnings or any messages. It can be very helpful. You should be used to using it. It's so easy to get to. Um, number two is to use that Lightning data service when possible. It's very cool. It's got a lot of good things. It's the way 
they're going with uh, the development, it's, it's good to use. Number one is to use those storable actions when possible because it delivers a lot of performance for little effort. Okay, so if you're interested in this and more best practices, you can check out my blog where I've blogged about a lot of, in fact, all of these things, um, and you could get more information about each of them. And I also will post something uh, when my course that I was telling you about at the beginning of this is released, which should be soon. And speaking of that, I have a uh, plural site was very um, nice enough to give me some one month unlimited access subscriptions because normally if you go to their website, you can only get like a 10 day free trial. So if you don't already have a Pluralsight subscription and you're interested in checking it out, uh, come see me after the talk. I've got a whole bunch of these. It'll get you one month unlimited access, um, which should be plenty of time to check out my course and a whole bunch of other stuff. So um, with that, let me tell you about some other Salesforce resources that are available to you. There's some great trailheads. Obviously, I love trailhead. Um, there is Get Started with Lightning Data Service that'll tell you a lot about that particular one. Then building a Lightning component to override a standard action. And the, there's this one, Lightning Component Core Concepts is new and it's just really cool. It does a lot to talk about a lot of these issues. And then on the developer blog, a great post um, that actually was the inspiration for the course by Christopher Conrad it's called Lightning Components Best Practices. And another one about caching data with storable actions that's really good. So those are very good to check out. And with that, I will open it up to any questions that anyone may have. We had about three minutes left. So if anybody has any questions, if not, you can stay afterwards and get one of these um, subscriptions, and I can talk to you then, too. So thank you much for coming.